Hello and welcome back to Let's Try. We're trying Other Side. Other Side's a, it's a weird one. It's a roguelite tactics game. This one's heavy on the meta progression. Luckily, and I really appreciate this, you can actually turn some of your meta progression off, meaning you don't get the perks anymore, not that you can turn meta progression off. But I actually don't mind the meta progression in this one because it's not so much about the uh, short-term games as it is the long-term one. Is What is Other Side? Well, it is a game uh, comprised of vampire daughters fighting weird plague doctors. It's one heavy with style, but that doesn't mean it's lacking in depth. This game is actually pretty deep and it's gonna be a difficult one to explain, but we're gonna talk a bit about it. This is pretty much what you see when you first start the game. I don't have any long-term perks and I have a level one daughters and we're just gonna jump into a combat. I'm gonna select my daughters to fight for me. We're gonna do uh, one of each because that's what I've got right now. I gotta say, I do really appreciate the style in this game. I like how they've gone for this kind of like black and white noir style and very minimalist with the uh, color palette. The color palette does actually serve to uh, convey certain important information, both with the UI and with uh, certain actions and attacks. So what do we got? We got our three daughters. Um, we're gonna be attacking with Temperance first. We can see how far she can move. So you can see in this top left corner here, this is how many action points she has. She has 100 action points. Um, right now you can see her in the bottom left corner. Her zero there means that she's acting right now on the timeline. This is kind of your initiative timeline. And it's a very important part of the combat and tactics in this game. So she's got 100 action points, but if she uses all 100 action points, she's going to trigger what is called an, a burst action point burst. You can see if I move here and, if, and I'm in range of these enemies, you can see that with the icons above each of those, um, she'll activate a burst by doing that. And by activating a burst, what it's going to do is put her at the very end of the initiative timeline. So that means that she's going to act after everyone else has. Whereas if I'm a little, if I play a little bit more conservatively and move here, she's only going to be at the 50 on the timeline. She's still going to act after everyone else. So it's good to know that and good to know, kind of plan your actions out. But knowing the difference between uh, a normal action and a burst action, is going to make the difference between a victory and a loss for sure. What I definitely like to do in the first little bit of each combat is basically just group up our daughters and hold back, let the enemy come to us. They have the same kind of actions as we do, although I'm not sure they have the ability to burst. It's a little bit vague. It's one of my few complaints about this game is I, it's a little bit vague on some of the information. For the most part, uh, this tactic has worked out for me. So we're gonna move there and we're going to end our turn. We have our lad over there. We can see that he is a melee type. You can pretty easily uh, figure out, like after after playing a few combats, you'll know exactly who is melee and who's not. Obviously these guys have guns, so they're gonna be ranged. Um, however, the game is pretty forgiving when it comes to fighting ranged units. They do have a instantaneous attack, but they generally charge their attack. So you can act around that behavior and actually interrupt their attack before they pull it off. We're gonna take care of this guy first. This is our uh, melee unit and we're back on temperance again. We're gonna attack him twice and we don't even have to move to do that, of course. We can see that the shot is gonna take 25 ability points. So we know we can do that twice before activating a burst. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. Um, the other thing we can do is an intercepting round. You can see the intercepting round, instead of taking ability points, is actually uh, actually going to hurt her 10% of her health. Now, you might think that this is a heavy price to pay, and we'll talk about how heavy that price is to pay later, but it's actually going to help a great deal in the long term because whatever attack that this Plague Doctor can do, generally any enemy is going to do an attack that hurts far more than 10% of your health. Let's talk about what the intercepting round does. The intercepting round is going to defend one of Temperance's allies. Whenever they're about to receive an attack, she'll shoot the enemy who's about to attack them and prevent that attack from going off. She can do this once per ally, meaning that if two enemies attacked Clements, then the second one would go through. But if one enemy attacked either Melody or Clements, it would prevent that attack from happening. So we could keep uh, attacking this guy and put Temperance at the end of the uh, timeline, but I'm gonna go ahead and hold back because we can see that she'll get to act again before the rest of the enemies. And we'll move on with Melody. Melody is the shield breaker. Shield breakers are, tend to be the tanks of the group. That's probably pretty easy to figure out. We we can see that it's going to cost her 27 AP to get over to this enemy before she could even attack him. So even if we do either a lunge or a slam, she's going to activate a burst. Probably still worth it though. Well, let's do that. 
because um, the, the melee actions tend to be a little bit spicier. They tend to do a lot more damage than uh, any of the other attacks. We can back her up. We can also see that these guys are not close enough really to do much so but they're ranged so they don't have to be right up to her we'll still back her up once we've gone into the burst emails will use up the rest of the ability points to let them waste an action coming to me well we can see that that wasn't much <laughs> okay all right well let's let's see what happens if we how far okay yeah so, so we can see like they they really don't need to be that close to attack us i have to assume that they're close enough at this point that they can start hitting us so why don't we just like go ahead and and go hard on them. If you're wondering how long intercepting round goes uh, or lasts, it will last until her next turn. So uh, unfortunately, that did mean that uh, her intercepting round didn't really go off and therefore that 10% HP is, is somewhat wasted. Okay, we can get uh, Melody over there and also do an attack. And these attacks tend to kill it's not guaranteed for a, an attack to hit an enemy. It's, it's you know, it's a kind of a luck based thing. However, the misses are very infrequent. So I would say that it's it sucks when it happens, but it, it's not like an XCOM where it's like, oh, you had a 99% chance of hitting and you still miss. Um, it doesn't, the game doesn't cheat uh, on on like misses or hits or stuff like, or dodges. And it's, it's a pretty rare thing. Also, I think it does vary from enemy to enemy. So the way I like to play this game is I like to give, like our, our characters are undoubtedly going to level up after this combat. I like to give pretty much everyone uh, reaction shots or delayed actions because they can be a lot more interesting and they can also trigger multiple times so if you get everything set up properly then uh, your combat can go a lot better i think we can just take this guy out he's like very much on his own we that's that combat done so we can see they've all leveled up to level two. Oh, good achievements I just got a Chivo goodie for me. So let's go to the inner void. We're going to go ahead and level each character up and you can start to see um, some of the choices you're going to make. The game puts kind of a heavy weight on the fact that, oh, uh, once you've chosen these, you're, you're, you're kind of stuck with them forever on those characters. However, if we go and look at our resurrections, we can see how many characters I have. I have that are like have died and are now in our like cemetery or I've given our blade master an immovable stance. This is a reaction attack that basically whenever any enemy ends in within her range, she gets to pull off a uh, 40, 470 damage attack happens multiple times happens as many times as enemies end in her range so this can be very powerful if you set it up properly um we can i've, I've given melody our uh shield bear blacksmith's grace this gives her armor uh which is basically damage reduction and the nice thing about this is it's not just damage reduction but anytime she receives an attack it moves her up 15 initiative units so that means we can go pretty hard with her and attack multiple enemies as many times as we want activate a ability um burst and then um, do Blacksmith's Grace. Blacksmith's Grace takes 10% of her health to activate. However, this armor will stack, meaning if we do it again on the next turn, she'll have whatever, 360 armor. And I've actually tanked bosses with this attack. So it's it's a really, really useful one. Um, she's got some other interesting kind of delayed and, and uh, reaction abilities that help her, her uh, allies. But that's, Blacksmith's Grace is one of my favorites. We'll do Soul Slinger. Soul Slinger has Shadow Round. I, again, I really like the reaction attacks they just help a lot there is the shadow round uh whenever a ally is attacking another monster she's gonna do uh, a, a reaction attack that does 212 damage not a lot but she can do it multiple times before her next turn so uh, that can that can be pretty powerful especially if there's another soul slinger um you don't have to run a group of all three of these you could do a group of three soul slingers and since they get to attack multiple times per uh turn that means you could set a couple like all of them up with shadow rounds and then having all of them do reaction attacks to enemies while they're uh, attacking. So you can you can combo things together pretty nicely. Let me talk about between combat. So you might notice that they're all very sleepy. Our daughters are very sleepy, must be put to bed, um, put them to bed. The the daughters are, are tired. Uh, what that means is that we, we, we have done a combat with those three daughters and we have to rest until the next day. I mean, that doesn't matter right now because there was only the one available combat to do. However, when we get to our next day, we'll see that there are multiple combats available. We can do those other combats, but it does require to ha uh, us to have other available daughters on uh, standby. So, you know, we've waited we've rested they're they're not sleepy anymore 
they've they've had a good nap uh and now we could do what we could do is we can germinate some more daughters this costs some currency this currency is um temporary meaning it doesn't uh, last between games however it's something you can raise with meta progression but you can see it costs 200 to raise and we have 550. so not really worth doing right now because we would really want to have a team of three daughters to do a second combat so we may as well not do that instead what we can do is equipment i'm going to call it equipment because there the actual terminology is personally think it's kind of annoying is memories but it's equipment so we can spend a bit of our currency to instead equip a memory or a, these bonuses to a skill on one of our daughters these are temporary meaning when our daughter dies they don't stay with her so you gotta you gotta kind of pick and choose when you want to equip these i'm gonna go ahead and equip it now increase damage of a skill yeah this this is a pretty good skill to equip that memory and we can equip another one to maybe our shield bearer increase the damage of a skill by 50. now that one is specific wording i actually think it's better to equip that to um our our ranged users shot because i'm pretty sure that means it'll do an extra 50 damage per shot and she her her basic shot does three shots so it does 87 da damage three times. I'm not sure. This is where one of those times where I wish this game is a bit more communicative about, about its information, but it, I, I don't know, but I think it might mean it adds 50 to each th time she shoots. But in any case, 50 damage is still 50 damage, so we'll, we'll take it. Let's do the rescue. The rescue, it tends to be pretty difficult, I won't lie, but it gives you a very specific reward. For deliverance. So I will say, I just want to talk about a gripe I have with this game is you're going to hear those voice lines a lot. Um, one of them is the boss for this current campaign. Uh, that's just going to have these annoying little quips. There, there isn't a lot of variety in them. So you're just going to hear them a lot and it's kind of annoying. I wonder if you can just like turn off voice. I mean, like, I don't know. I, I It's it's kind of a, a blow because I mean, it does add a, something to the game, but it, it really is very frequent. So anyway, uh, what we have to do is escort this character character the bright soul um, from here to here as soon as she's in there um, she has a extra leave ability I actually didn't know this you you don't you don't just like end your turn in this field you have to use the leave ability which costs zero AP so even if you're getting there at the very end of a, an ability burst like she's used up all of her other abilities she can still leave for free we're not just gonna need to get her there we're gonna need to get all of our daughters there as well hopefully without any of them dying I haven't talked too much about the penalty of death or taking damage but we will maybe after this combat is over in case someone has died so we're just gonna leave her there for now uh we're gonna want to kill these guys these guys have an annoying extra ability they are able to buff themselves with extra armor so we want to try and hit them before they do that right now they only have uh 56 and 62 armor so they're only going to reduce our damage by a little bit oh yeah you can see like they, they're already tanking you know her shots are, are basically no good to us so instead i might just set up an intercepting round as well as a shadow round so we can guarantee a kill so that's going to take a little bit of health so she couldn't kill him but that extra little shadow round was able to we can actually move her up and then do some damage to the next one as well and we'll get another shadow round from temperance and then clements should be able to deal the rest of the damage there we go the blade master is definitely like the dps some of the enemies where are they going to summon in oh all the way over there that's kind of a problem for us because they're going to move this way and probably we're going to have to deal with other monsters summoning in while we're dealing with them so these guys are not really a problem obviously if our bright soul dies then the mission is over and we have uh, we have a <laughs> A character summoning in right next to her so that's not really good we could do an Im imbued blade wouldn't be the worst idea ever they'll summon in after she pulls off her move we can see where that imbued blade is going to land and then it's so it's going to land right before they get summoned in so actually not not a great idea so instead we're going to do an immovable stance and i'm hoping because they're a ranged unit they're not going to move around too much they're just going to stay where they are because they're already in the perfect position Oh, he did actually move very aggressively. I did not see that coming. Her immovable blade did not go off. You can't move uh, through units. So what I'm going to have her do is block this path here, and hopefully that'll make them move up to her, and then we're going to do another immovable stance. 
The enemy are pretty predictable, which is good because there's enough things to worry about than like, oh, the enemy d didn't th do the thing that I thought they were going to do. They did something very alien to their own behavior. Bright, Bright Soul might be able to just like book it on the, her next turn. I'm going to move her back and then do another immovable stance. I just really like this move. It, it sucks when it doesn't go off, but it's only 5% health. Um, so it's, it's not a heavy toll and then it can generally kill enemies. Well, didn't kill him, but it softened him up enough for, uh, oh, I love that. I love that they, they both went for it. Shots, 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 shots. Oh, that was not, that was not it. That sucks. Well, we'll just do a burst to finish that guy off. In burst mode, we may as well take some shots on this guy. Well, he's a range unit. He's probably going to set up a massive shot, so we don't have to worry about him. And we actually are within range with our bite soul, so we're going to have her move over there. And like I said, we can use this leave for free so we have accomplished our goal but now we need to get our daughters out of here they're going to be summoning in a whole bunch of enemies fortunately they're all summoning in from the opposite end so we can just go ahead and leave Ooh, oh okay well like she's got some armor so she didn't take very much damage okay not a big deal that was that went very smoothly so uh, here is our benefit for uh, rescuing our girl. I, I don't I don't know how I feel about this. Like, I don't like being forced to make an awful decision like this every time, but um, we can free her for some extra currency or we can sacrifice her for a resurrection token. On just 100% sacrificing her seems to me is the correct decision every single time. So it just, it kind of sucks that like every time it's like, oh yeah, you just go ahead and kill this like, you know, child uh, for your for your own benefit. There's no morality here. There's no like moral system uh, as far as I can tell. So it's just like you're just gonna feel like a jerk every time. But you know, it's it is what it is. I guess we're going for a dark universe. This is the dark end. Our main team is uh, sleepy. They they need they need another nap. What we can do now is talk a little bit about how we heal them. So you can see like the, the health is consistent over many combats. So Temperance having used our, uh, we, we used that reaction shot a few times or intercepting round a few times is now getting down there. And I, I do appreciate how health is kind of represented on the character as well. We can see her, her she's got a little bit of blood on her. How do we heal her? Well, we can uh, regenerate her by sacrificing one of our other daughters. So we could sacrifice, uh, you know, Melody, for example to regenerate her to full health. Now, the only reason we can do this, by the way, is that because Melody is at level three, same as Temperance. If Melody was at level two or one, um, then we wouldn't be able to do this. So this is a, it is, could be considered a high cost. Now, the sacrifice token, you you, you might be able to guess, is just going to 100% help us in this regard because we could uh, resurrect one of our uh, many other daughters that have died in battle. And then um, either just use them or just sacrifice them for our uh, other character. So, you know, having a few extra daughters is really gonna help. And you can see we like, we have a bunch of currency here. Uh, 100% something you're going to want to do is to just like germinate a whole bunch of daughters, throw them at combat, level them up a couple of times, and then grow your, your cemetery a little bit so that you have uh, a nice pile of bodies to pull from so that you can either sacrifice them for other daughters or just like, you know, have higher level daughters on queue to, to do some of the harder combats. This is kind of the actual like long-term grind of this game. And I actually do really enjoy that because, because our units are very disposable. I don't really care when they die. It's not really a big deal when you lose a battle or a combat. It just means like, okay, well, I, I gotta, you know, grind up a, another few daughters and maybe resurrect them. And like they resurrect at their level. So then you can like throw them at some more combats, level them up a bit more. So that, uh, that actual, that gameplay loop is really satisfying. So then we come back to our remembrances. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to activate a couple of our remembrances. 25% Vitae cost to equip memories. That means that equipping memories is not going to cost nearly as much. Uh, daughters start with more health. You may resurrect a fallen daughter. So we just get a free resurrection token. More damage versus specific enemies. We could skip an era. This is one of the more costly ones. We can see these are these are costing us shards and we've been gaining shards from 
uh, doing those combats. However, we only gain the shards that we've gotten from combats by ending this session, if that makes sense. Newborn daughters start at mastery level four, and it's not even that expensive. <laughs> Now germinating daughters for the same cost is going to generate them at level four, which is just kind of absurd. Like in terms of even in terms of meta progression, um, I feel like maybe some people would be like, what? That's just that's just you're just giving that to me. Uh, we're going to we're going to go ahead and germinate a few daughters. Give life to our daughter. And we can choose which one I tend to just like to make uh, a team of all three. And now she's uh, we have a daughter at level four. <laughs> I could resurrect one. Why don't I resurrect one as well? Because uh, I don't get to keep these resurrection tokens. So I'll resurrect uh, one of my level five characters and we're going to have to level. And what we're going to do is we're going to confront the boss. We'll look at what the boss on this uh, campaign looks like i've put about six hours into this game you might consider that to be a lot but i think it's not a lot con considering a lot of uh roguelikes and I, I like you we can see what the difference that amount of time makes to uh some characters against the boss let me be clear i beat this boss on my second attempt the first one he absolutely stomped me but i do think that that level of progression is actually pretty satisfying and because we're treating our daughters disposably because we're treating our games disposably i actually don't mind it as much i don't mind the fact that we we there's no way we could finish it on our first attempts i'm going to talk about these guys these guys are a pain in the butt uh they don't do very much damage but they don't care <laughs> about doing damage what they care about is backing up and then buffing the boss we're gonna have to deal with them um, before we can even start thinking about the boss because they're gonna buff him with just an absurd amount of armor uh, as soon as they're all dead the actual boss fight begins you can see it adds 500 armor and they all add 500 armor and the armor stacks so there's no way we can possibly do any damage to the boss right now so what i'm going to do is i'm going to run over here and we're going to start doing our blacksmith's grace um we can do saving grace saving grace is reaction shot it's kind of like the intercept intercepting round where she'll take an attack for from someone else and then also attack the attacker and and cancel the whole thing doing a, a, a lunge on that guy killing them and she's just gonna act as the tank she'll tank the boss's attack she should do a pretty good job about that one little ui thing i really do appreciate i can just like see what position would be best by hovering over it and we can see like who we're in range of if i go here i know i don't get the backstab on the enemy or sorry the, the boss but if i move here i know i'm in range of everyone and then we can you know compare we can see okay that's 27 ap you know this is 24 i i, I really appreciate that level Level of attention dealt to the UI. So we can just go ahead and kill these guys with one attack. And now that we've killed all the caretakers, then the boss is like, yo, Exquisite. how dare you? I can't believe you. And then we'll set up an intercepting round. He's going to attack Innocent. They, they really did go for like a very grim dark <laughs> style in this game, didn't they? We'll also set up a shadow round. So she's going to cancel one of his attacks and do quite a bit of extra damage because she's getting that backstab off as well. So he's going to do this area of attack. That means it's, it's, it's a pretty high penalty. I shouldn't have um, brought the Blade Master. She gets completely stomped by this because she can't really do much. She could go in and attack and then jump out, which is probably what we're going to do. But unfortunately, he's not just doing an area of attack right now. He's also set up a reaction. Pretty much anyone who attacks him is going to take an attack. So that's why I usually rely on our shield bearer. We can go in and actually do some damage with the blade master and we also got an extra attack with our soul slinger we can keep keep going we got pretty close here that was that was pretty good now he gets to attack he's gonna probably set up another area nope he's gonna do a big old attack probably kill her we're just gonna go ahead and kill him That's, uh, that's, that's our indication, by the way, that we, they got a critical and they felt really badass about it. Memories of another life. Guard them well. I cannot tell you how sick of that line I am. <laughs> and we're on to campaign two and I get to get stomped by the first combat, but I'm going to do that off screen um, because uh, you don't need to see that necessarily. So uh, that's going to do it for other side. If you enjoyed this video, definitely hit that like button and consider subscribing for more content like this. I'll see you guys next time. Take it easy.